how do we complicate this performance that black folks are expected to play, um, or to engage in in this campus, which is to say a performance of normalcy. Um, this expectation that we can move throughout our day-to-day our -day lives and the spaces on this campus without ever addressing the history, without ever addressing the elephant in every room on this campus, which is to say like the thick climate of kind of racial and hospitability. Our projects are contextualized around Silent Sam and white supremacy on this campus and how 3D and 4D art can create a conversation that will change and transform our conditions. Um, how do we talk about representations of blackness within UNC Chapel Hill? Um, because we need to talk about what it feels like to be black in the space. Our work kind of grew out of a protest. Um, so for the better half of the 2019, um, Jerry and I were involved in a news protest um, where, where we were wearing nooses while on the campus of UNC Chapel Hill. Um, and it originally started as a way to encourage um, university leadership to remove the statue. The idea behind the protests, which would then later launch the art, was kind of extending conversations around white supremacy and the culture of white supremacy on this campus beyond the statue itself to talk about um, what's born in the bodies of, of black students on this campus. How do people carry their blackness? Um, how do they raise complaints about their experiences and how do they not, right? And what are the reasons for doing either? And we wanted to kind of bring those all into a conversation together and to validate the many ways that black people exist in this space. For the Black Out Loud exhibit that was held on September 25th, 2019, it's a pop-up exhibit one day, and we work with 12 student artists um, who took up the theme of representations of blackness within the UNC Chapel Hill community. And they each created or submitted works that spoke to that theme in different ways, in their voices, right? And we were encouraging folks to express themselves openly, to be their, their whole selves without the restraint that's typically expected. Um, and our contribution to that exhibit was a short film that we made. We set up a video booth in the pit, which is a very popular gathering space on campus. And outside the booth, we just set up a little um, chart of paper that had a simple phrase on it that said, being black at UNC feels like dot, dot, dot. And we had about 10 students stop and voluntarily share their experiences. You know, they, they were really, really candid about how it feels to be black in Carolina. Um, kind of to externalize that pain and frustration um, and to do it in a kind of mobile way that brought a lot of people into, um, or at least gave a lot of people the opportunity to engage in conversation. And Diavion was one of those students um, who was featured in the film, who willingly stopped and, and shared her, her thoughts and expressions on that. My Afrofuturism art sort of incorporates the, the past and, and the, the, the terrible past of this country and of this university and, 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 and having the opportunity for participants to, you know, face that head on and to confront that in a way where, you know, solutions are, you know, bound to just sprout from, from the appearance of the art. Um, I noticed that, you know, within our first meeting when I met, you know, Jerry and Cortland, um, that they, within their documentary art, had the same vision or, the, or a common purpose for the art, which was to um, contextualize, you know, imagine UNC's future with referring to or in touch with the past. And my project specifically is to um, make three sculptural representations um, that are in homage to the first three black African-American males to attend the university, uh, John Lewis Brandon, um, Leroy Frazier, and Ralph Frazier. Um, and so my project idea sort of transformed after the settlement where I sort of thought about what are ways that I can connect these three pieces to the trauma of what is going on now. 
And so these pieces will be in homage to these to these amazing men. And they will also be um, painted and, and, and have, you know, a disposition of fear, right? And the stages of fear and the stages of black fear on this campus. How does black expression, emotion, how we appear in spaces, how does that become informed by the white supremacist decisions of our university administrators?